Hey guys, and welcome to day five of Holiday Club. But wait a minute, where's Charlotte? What are you doing over there? Day five of Holiday Club. That means it's the last day. I'm so sad. Well, just because it's the last day doesn't mean we're not going to have fun. Well, let's hand over to Reese for the story. After Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared again to his disciples. This is what happened. Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, James and John, the sons of Zebedee and two other followers decided to go fishing on the Lake Galilee. They stayed out all night but did not catch any fish. Early the next morning, Jesus stood on the shore but the disciples did not know it was him. Children, have you caught any fish? he asked them. No, they answered sadly. Jesus said to them, Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will catch some fish. They did as Jesus told them and caught so many fish they could not pull the net back onto the boat. John, the disciple, realised who the man on the, on the beach was. It was the Lord, he said with excitement. When Peter heard this, he immediately put on his coat and jumped into the water. He was so happy to see Jesus and wanted to go and meet him. The rest of the disciples came ashore, dragging the net with them. They were not far from the beach. Jesus was waiting for them. There was a fire with fish cooking on it and some bread. He said, bring some of the fish you have caught. Peter quickly went and dragged the net up the shore. It was full of great fish, 153 of them, but the net had not broken. Jesus asked them to come and eat. None of the disciples asked, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. This was the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he rose from the dead. After eating, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me more than these others? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Peter cried. Feed my lambs, said Jesus. A second time, Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Peter answered. Feed my sheep, said Jesus. A third time Jesus asked Peter, Do you love me? Now Peter was sad and replied, Yes, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, said Jesus once more. Then Jesus said to Peter, When you were young, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, someone else will dress you and take you where you are not one to go. Jesus said this to explain how Peter would give his life for the gospel. Then Peter turned round and saw John, the disciple, and said to Jesus, What about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to wait until I return, what is that to you? Follow me. There were many other things that Jesus did. If all the stories about Jesus were written down, there would not be room enough in the world to hold all the books. Roll up, roll up, come and get your fish. We've got sardines, tuna, come get it here. Hello, hello, hello. What's going on here then? Want to buy some fish, officer? We've got fresh fish caught this morning. Uh, no, not today, thank you. Oh, come on, tuna is lovely. This sounds a bit fishy to me. <laughs> well, it is a fish station. No, 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 no. I mean, something here is not quite right. What do you mean, officer? Well, I heard that last night none of the boats caught anything. Not a fish in sight. Well, we went just this morning, so there must be a mistake. The fishermen told us when we were catch uh, collecting them that they saw this man called Jesus on the side and they weren't getting any fish all night, but as soon as he came, they suddenly got tons. You mean... The same Jesus who was uh, killed on the cross this last week? Yes, but apparently he's not dead now. But what? As a policeman, I have to deal in facts, and this just makes no sense at all. Neither to us, officer, but he says they saw him and there was no doubt that it was him. What? What was he doing on the beach? He was helping them fish. He took... Well, you see, what happened was they had the net on the, on the side of the boat. They couldn't catch anything. Yeah. Tried all night. Couldn't... Nothing. Yeah. And Jesus goes, cast your nets on the other side. 
and then they cast them over and try haul up. But it's so heavy, there's, it's full with fish. They haven't seen so much in their life. I don't believe it. As a policeman, I have to deal in facts, and that just doesn't make sense. Well, that's, that's what Peter said, but he was delighted. I know, he's a bit nervous because he didn't think they could be friends, but... So, Peter had a fallen out with Jesus? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He... Why? What happened? Peter said that, uh, Jesus said to Peter, you see, that he would deny knowing him three times, and Peter did just that when he died. He was scared of being tortured and put to death on the cross, similar to Jesus. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is incredible, really, because Peter, you see, he thought he wouldn't be forgiven by Jesus, but Jesus did. He did just that. He forgave him instantly, even though denying everything that he'd ever done with him. Wow. Wow. Well, right. I'm not sure we've quite got to the bottom of this, so I'll keep an eye on this place. Uh, place. Good one, officer. Hello, it's Dynamic Dan here, and today I'm in the mood for a picnic, as I'm thinking all about Jesus and the picnic on the beach. But first, if you don't mind, it's hungry work making videos, so I thought I'd have some of my picnic now. Starting with this delicious chicken sandwich. Yum! <coughs> <laughs> Ugh, I don't think I'll eat that. That would be foul play. <laughs> Maybe I'll try crisps instead. I love crisps. I wonder what flavour they could be. Let's have a look. <coughs> oh, Oh, there was a big snake in there. I think someone is playing tricks on me. Uh, maybe I'll have a drink instead. I have some water here. Yeah, ooh, this is strange. Do you want to see? I think this must be spring water. <laughs> spring water. We'll move on. Well, the disciples didn't have sandwiches and crisps and things like that, but they were surrounded by water. They were in their boat trying to catch some fish, but not having much luck. They were getting frustrated and probably angry too, until Jesus performed one of his many miracles. Things that seemed impossible, but he could do them because he is awesome. He said to the disciples, cast out your nets on the other side of the boat. And they weren't sure, they knew the water was empty, but they did, and soon they caught loads and loads of fish and had a great big fishy feast of a picnic. Yum! Problem is, I don't have any fish or any other food now. Oh, I'll just have to go hungry. Let's do a card trick instead. What we'll do... Hey! A fish! Look at that! That must be the catch of the day! And there's nothing fishy about that. Now this story also makes me think about forgiveness. Peter, a close friend of Jesus, lied and said he'd never even heard of him. But Jesus still chose to forgive Peter because he loved him, just as God loves us and forgives us for the things that we do and say that aren't right. And so we should learn to forgive others where we can, and forgiveness comes from the heart. In fact, I have a picture of a heart just here. There it is, that's not the right shape. What is that? Looks like a red nose or a cherry, a tomato. Hmm. Hey, there's more here too. Four pieces. Oh, maybe these are the pieces of a broken heart. You see, sometimes when we get upset or angry or hurt by the things people have done to us or said to us, it can leave us feeling like we have a broken heart. How am I going to fix this? Has anyone got any smeller tape? It's a bit like sellotape, but I can't say sellotape. I've never learned how. Maybe if I squeeze them together like this and say abracadabra. Oh, um, we'll try again. Abracadabra. No. Maybe we'll try a magic word. Let's try the word God restores, because God can help with a broken heart. We'll try a wand too. Everyone say God restores on three. One, two, three. God restores. Yeah. Oh, I broke my wand. We'll try the other end. It should still work. On three. One, two, three. God restores. Ah. Broken wand. Now I have a broken wand and a broken heart. Oh no. Let's see if it's worked though. Maybe. You won't believe this. All the pieces are on the same picture. Do you want to see? Okay. Prepare to be amazed. Here we go. One completely restored. Ha. Ah. That's not right. Oh, this reminds me that sometimes it can feel like our heart isn't in the right place when it comes to forgiving someone. Sometimes we have to make a choice to forgive someone before we really feel like we want to in our heart. 
That can leave us feeling mixed up and muddled up like this heart. But sometimes that's the right thing to do. Hmm, maybe we'll try again. A different magic wand, I think. Uh, ah, yes, let's try this wand. This is my strongest wand. I've had this for 10 years. It has never, ever let me down. With this wand, what's that? No, no, it can't bend. It's made of steel. It's super strong, like me. Urgh. With this wand, we should be able to... Hmm? No, I don't think so. No, it can't bend. I can even wave it in the air like that. And you can see... Whoa, it's all twisty and bendy. Let's try this wand. You know the drill. Everyone say, God restores. One, two, three, God restores. Let's see if it's worked. I hope it has. Yes, it has. You want to see? Okay, I will show you. Ready? The heart is completely restored. Back to normal. Yeah, ooh. That's not right either. It's all twisted. This reminds me that sometimes when we are faced with that choice about whether to forgive someone or not, we can get twisted ideas of what's right and wrong. Sometimes we might think it's better to get back at them, to upset them, to hurt them, to get our revenge. But God doesn't want us to do that. So I think we need to try again. Maybe another magic wand. Oh yes, I have one down here. A really big wand to remind us that God's love is really big. Let's see. Ah yes, massive wand. Oh, that's not very big. I was hoping for a bigger wand than that. Not to worry. What was that noise? Definitely heard a noise. What? I heard it again. What is that noise? I don't know. Oh wow. A massive wand, still nowhere near as big as God's love. But let's see if it's big enough to overcome this problem. God's love is bigger than any problem. Let's see. Everyone say, God restores on three. One, two, three, God restores. Wow, it's huge, it's like a helicopter. Oh. Now who thinks it might have worked? I hope so, I'm running out of wands. Let's see if the heart is restored. Yes, it is. Hooray, it's worked. Ta-da. Hmm? Oh, you want to see? Of course, I'll show you. Fingers crossed. I hope it's worked. Let's have a look. Oh, yes, I think. Yes, there we are. The heart is completely back to normal. And through God's love, we can choose to forgive others and we can feel in our hearts that's the right thing to do. Although I think God's love is even bigger than this. Let's try one more thing. Maybe, I know, the reason God loves us so much is because he gave his only son so that we could be forgiven for the things that we get wrong. And his son was called Jesus. Let's wave this J for Jesus around over the bag and let's see if anything else happens. This time, we won't say God restores, we'll say God's love is so big on three. One, two, three, God's love is so big. Let's have a look. Has it worked? Has it worked? Something's happening. Something's happening. Wow! Look at this. We have, oh, a great big heart. It's absolutely huge. Wow! Still nowhere near as big as God's love. God loves us so much and we should focus on his love and let that help us to forgive others. Well, I hope you have loved this video as much as I've loved making it. I've been Dynamic Dan, stay awesome and bye for now. So Dan just talked about forgiveness. Forgiveness is really important to Christians. When Jesus died on the cross, he took on all of our sins and because of that, we are forgiven by God. Forgiving others can be really hard, but afterwards it can feel so good. A really good way to learn about forgiveness is through prayer. So guys, it is prayers again. And so we're gonna be using the same format we've used all week, touching each finger to our thumb, representing the letters of the word hope. Let's start. H. Happy. We are happy that you have forgiven us. O. Oh dear. We are sorry when we don't forgive others. P. Please. Help us to forgive others when we don't feel like it. E. Let everyone who is arguing right now become friends. Amen.
sometimes And you forgive me No one knows me, God, like you You see who I am, not what I do And you forgive me Wow, that song was amazing. Now let's hand over to Sam to see what the craft is today. Okay, so today's craft, we will be making a fishing game and here it is. So guys, we are at the end of Holiday Club 2020. We're so glad you joined us. We can't wait to see you next year. But before you go, don't forget, prayer service every third Sunday of every month with lunch on Zoom afterwards. So, let us know if you've enjoyed it this year and be looking out for the dates next year. Bye! Bye.